Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended. Um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. We do this show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And they are all recorded. So if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We have all of our recordings up on our website. So you can always go there and um, watch anything you may have missed. We do a mixture of things here, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, basically anything related to libraries, we will um, have it on the show. Uh, we have commission staff, Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, and we do bring in guest speakers uh, as we have this morning. Um, today with us, uh, joining us remotely from Kearney, Nebraska, is uh, Carrie Pearson and um, Dr. Ron Wirtz, who are from University of Nebraska at Kearney, and they ha I actually attended a presentation earlier this spring um, at a spring meeting um, for uh, one of our Nebraska Library Association sections, the college and university section, and they talked about this learning commons that they put to get, that was put together um, over the last few years. It's been quite a pro process <laughs> at the university, university of Nebraska Kearney, and they are going to share with us um, what um, they did. Um, Carrie, is you are the are you currently the director of the Learning Commons, or how is, I'm, how is that? I'm working? the interim assistant okay. director. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to. Assistant director. Right. Okay. <laughs> I knew there was staffing changes and things and things were in in flux mm -hmm. as far as that. Okay. Yes. So we've got both of you, both assistant directors. I know Carrie, you're on the Learning Commons side, and Ron, you're um, from the library side. Right. Correct. Okay, great. So um, I'll just let you go ahead. You've got your presentation here. Um, go ahead and take it away, and then we'll take questions um, near the end. Great. All right, thanks. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. We're very happy to have you with us here at Encompass. Um, Ron and I are here to talk to you this morning about um, our learning commons, and I think the process that we went through in developing that. Um, we encourage you to ask questions um, as we go through, so, you know, Feel free to do whatever you need to do um, to, to ask us, because this is a very casual thing for us. We want to hear what, what you're concerned about and, and need to know more about. Hey, Let's Carrie. See. Yes. I actually have one question, a question that already okay. came in right off that, which <laughs> sure. may be something you're going to mention already, but it's just kind of funny that it came in. Uh, someone says that their director already wants to know, what is the brand of chairs in the photo that you guys got? <laughs> <laughs> is that something you'll talk about where things came from later on? Um, or? Yeah, I can, if I can get that person's information, I can certainly uh, get that to the them. Details. I know, okay. um, I can't remember the name of the company actually off the top of my head, but I'd be mm -hmm. happy to get that to them. Okay. I'll I'll get you guys connected afterwards, no problem. Okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Chairs. Yeah, <laughs> they do. I, they look very cool. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay. And I also like the ones you have that are the um, the green ones in the back there, the benches, yeah, the booths. Yeah. The booths. I mean, those yeah. Are very popular, both for studying and napping. So. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> All right, great. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, let me get on my slide here. We're going to talk a little bit about the vision uh, that we had of the Learning Commons when we first started out and the transition and reality and a little bit about how we see it going into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I apologize for my voice. I'm experiencing uh, uh, probably some sensitivity to pollen and mold and that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, first up, we'll talk about the vision and how we got started. Um, initially, before the Learning Commons was developed in 2009, we had two academic support services on campus, and they were housed in different places. We had the Writing Center, which was actually housed in the library. Yeah, it, it was in the west end of the library, on the second floor originally, uh, in a small space. Uh, occasionally, it would, uh, as it got uh, crowded in that space, it would spill over into some study rooms that were adjacent to that location and even into the uh, west end of the library space itself. Um, the peer tutoring program um, was housed in a hallway actually in a building, and uh, another building, not the library, and it was typically regarded 
as remedial. And by that I mean the students who were there um, getting help were regarded, and not actually, they didn't fulfill this demographic expectation, but they were regarded as being the students who weren't going to make it, or the students who really, really were struggling and needed to pass their class. Um, and so because we were outside of kind of an academic context, it was difficult for us to show people that we were helping not only the students who were struggling, but also the people who did very well in their classes, which is a different reputation to have on campus. One of the things that had been happening with the library over a number of years is that the gate count had uh, continued to decline. And this is not an uncommon phenomenon in university libraries, partly because of the importance of online resources, but it's something that we were concerned about and wanted to see changed. Also, up on the second floor of the library, we had a space of about 4,800 square feet that was essentially a carol farm. Uh, it had a lot of steady carols, cubicles that nobody ever used. Um, it was just a waste of space. Now the Writing Center, um, we provided a graph of attendance um, before the Learning Commons was developed. And you can see that there is a fluctuation in um, you know, the number of students who were getting help, or, or the number of, of times students were being helped in the Writing Center. And a lot of that had to do with the changing leadership of the Writing Center. Um, you know, it's, it's gone from different hands all over campus. We've had Writing Center directors who've been in place, you know, full time. We've had GAs running the program. Um, it just didn't really have a home um, where, you know, it felt like it could kind of stay in one place with one person. And this is a picture of the space that Ron described where the Writing Center was housed before the Learning Commons. Um, you can see, it, you know, it's a very functional space. They've got chairs on wheels, tables that work, individual spaces where tutors can work with students. Um, but it also, you know, like Ron said, was outgrowing um, the space that it had. It had to use the study rooms next door. Um, there wasn't a lot of room um, to have a private conversation. Um, and it just wasn't ideal for the services that were being offered. Um, and we do still have this plant. Um, <laughs> I just want to mention that. Somehow it has also survived the transition. Um, in, the, the, learn, the, sorry, the peer tutoring program um, has generally seen steady growth. Um, and again, this is before the Learning Commons. You can see an increase there, um, a few thousand visits over those years. Um, but we had outgrown our space. And we had a program review in the spring of 2009 um, that emphasized our need to find another place to host our services because we were spilling into, I'll show you a picture. This is our hallway that we had right here. We had some tables here in this space. Um, and there was also a room up here where um, we would have our math tutoring in the evenings because that's a very popular subject for us to help with. Um, and the hallway was distracting. There was a lot of noise and traffic going through there. Um, and it just wasn't an ideal space for students to get help. Um, there was also a really bad echo um, that made it difficult often to hear people. And that's where serendipity came in. Um, following the program review, the two deans were sitting at a dean's meeting uh, side by side, and they started to talk about the academic program review that showed that the Learning Commons had uh, basically outgrown the space available. And the library dean pointed out that she had space that could be used. And so what they talked about was um, finding a way for those two I guess situations, they weren't necessarily problems, but situations to come together. Um, and the dean of the library had been looking into developing a learning commons well before this actually happened. And so it was at the forefront of her mind um, to, do, to do so. And this was a really great um, overlap of opportunity for it to get started. So the idea initially was just to get these two services, the peer tutoring program and the Writing Center together in this one space so that it would be more convenient for students and so that we could start working with the library and offering our academic support to the campus. 
um, basic to the plans that started to develop uh, was a conjunction with the uh, UNK mission statement and the strategic plan of the university. And as we looked through uh, those documents, we found that there was a lot of interest in cooperating across um, divisions of the uh, university. So we got a lot of support. Mm -hmm. From the chancellor, the vice chancellors, all the way up the line, um, they saw the, the, the potential for a learning commons on campus um, to help students improve outside of the classroom. Um, and there really wasn't any way to see this as, as something that um, wasn't going to help our students. Um, it fulfilled so many aspects of our mission statement directly, you know, by bringing academic and student affairs together, by having us cooperate across boundaries, um, and, and they wanted that to happen, and so we had their full support. And that really helped. <laughs> And that support is continued. So we have a, we have a space um, and a space that we envisioned as enhancing interaction. Um, you know, libraries have traditionally been quiet places, but we realized that this was not going to be the case. And so we wanted again to bring together in a centralized location these support services. Um, the idea isn't just to do that for um, convenience. It's not just finding one space for that to happen. The idea is also um, to bring them together so that it is efficient for the student to go from um, one to the other and to have those services working together collaboratively and deliberately um, to maybe make new services or new procedures um, that amplify students' experiences outside the classroom. And so a lot of things would take place. Uh, we think that the result would be a synergy that would be greater than any of the individual parts. So we envision the learning commons as a combination of library resources and services, student affairs, and technology resources. Now the things that we have in our learning commons um, are typical of many learning commons across uh, the globe, but there's also variations. There's many different ways that a learning commons can be implemented. Um, first, the first few things on this list are things that we do have. We have obviously writing and tutoring help. We do have some study rooms um, that we built. Um, we have desktop computers, which you know, you would think with students with iPads and laptops nowadays wouldn't get used, but they are used. <laughs> students come in to use our computers regularly. Um, we provide reference and research help whenever it's needed. Um, study skills actually are uh, provided through another element of student affairs that is uh, Skills coaching. Right, academic success academic coaching. Success. Yep, that's another program. Mm -hmm. And if we need uh, assistance with IT, we provide that through the library uh, IT personnel. And the next step we took, obviously, was a transition. We had this great idea, we had a great opportunity, and we needed to find a way to make it come true. So again, the, the three services or programs, partners, however you want to say it, that we started with were the Peer Tutoring Program, which focuses on assistance to students in general studies courses, our Writing Center, which as many of you know helps with any writing at any stage of the writing process, and the Library, which houses um, you know, the, the student research um, materials, um, study space, and technology access, and all of these three things are going to come together. The original plan from the university architect uh, envisioned the use of the space uh, and included a lot of glass walls around individual tables. Um, when the student tutors were uh, invited to comment on this, they said we can't have those glass walls all over the place. 
consequence, uh, it would interfere with the way that we tutor. Yeah. So uh, they collaborate a lot. They ask each other questions and provide support to one another. They knew that this would not work. So we took that feedback and were able to develop some new designs um, that work better for what services were going to be there. The initial plan um, was to have our learning co commons open in the fall of 2010. And so our peer tutoring offices moved from that hallway in the other building um, to a space in the library where the writing center was operating. It wasn't the old writing center space, it was a different space. Um, and that happened in the summer of 2010 to facilitate the initiations of that um, collaboration. Now the idea was to um, turn the space that I moved my office into into the Learning Commons offices um, where you know, our administration would be housed. And then outside of that, um, that study carol space would be transformed into the Learning Commons over the summer. And then challenges arose. Uh, one of the challenges was that uh, there was some, apparently some problem in identifying the funding that was needed. And uh, the actual process of gutting the, the uh, space had already started. Uh, it had been divided off from the library with a uh, plastic uh, and uh, stud uh, wall, a dust wall. Um, the ceiling tiles had been removed, the lighting had been pulled up, uh, the flooring had been removed. So it was not usable for any other purpose. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, um, the individual who at the time was our writing center director and who was also going to be the learning commons um, assistant director uh, moved to China because her husband got a job there. And so we were without leadership for the writing center and without formal leadership for the Learning Commons. And so that was another challenge that we experienced that summer. However, in spite of that, uh, we had to open. <laughs> we couldn't just not have tutoring in the fall. And so Ron and I worked very closely together over the summer um, to ensure that we would be able to open somewhere together in the library. And we identified space on the other side of the floor where the Learning Commons was being built where there were already several tables and study tables. We put a desk there um, for, as a welcome desk where students could sign in for services, you know, get information about tutoring. Um, and this, this move, while this might not seem like an ideal space, um, it was a huge step up for our tutoring program to be out here because we had more room, um, which is what we needed. And so even in the transition, um, we were able to find um, a better fit from what we had originally had. The reason that we were able to do this and utilize this space is that over the previous year, uh, library staff had worked very hard on uh, identifying items from our uh, standing reference collection that we could weed out. Um, this allowed us to take uh, a lot of uh, shelf units that were in the center of the main library floor and move them down to the, low, to the lower floor, to the basement, and open up that whole area for student use. And as we brought tables and chairs into the space, uh, students immediately sat down at the table and started working. So we knew that we had the space needed for all our activities. Mm -hmm. So our collaboration was ongoing despite um, you know, the, the challenges that we were experiencing at the time um, with the construction and then finding someone. And you know, actually the process that we went through together in hiring the Writing Center and Learning Commons Assistant Director was um, bonding for us. I'm not sure, I'm sure what other word to use, yeah, but we had to you know, develop a job description together we went through the search committee together. Um, we interviewed people together. And um, that really helped us understand what we were looking for um, and what our learning commons had the potential to become and where we were at. And so that process itself, even though it was a challenge staffing-wise for that initial uh, first semester, um, was also very beneficial. Yeah, we're kind of going through that process again because 
uh, we're looking for, uh, again, a writing center, learning commons assistant director. Mm -hmm. Carrie's serving as the interim, but we're interviewing or accepting uh, applications for uh, a new person in that role. Uh, we've added additional technology in the general library space, um, a lot more computers. Um, other computer labs around the campus are gradually being closed, and that equipment uh, generally is appearing in the library, and it's more of a load on our technology people, but uh, it's definitely needed, and uh, it's not uncommon especially in the afternoon, late afternoon, or early evening, to find every computer in the building in use. And what we were able to do in that fall, in that transitional space, was um, students were saying that they wanted more computer access in the library. And we, the Learning Commons Services, had computers just waiting um, that we had already purchased for a space that wasn't finished yet. And so we were able to bring those out with the help of um, technology support from the library and, and that way, both we benefited you know, from having the technology in our tutoring space, but then the library as a whole also benefited um, by having that well available to students. And really, of course, the people who benefit from that are the students. You know, we don't think about our programs benefiting as much as, as what it does for the students we're serving. Well, all this was going on, the deans uh, continued to collaborate and uh, provide resources and, and support. And this also went up into higher administration as well with our senior vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. He was very supportive. Yes. So we're going to take a big jump here <laughs> because that's really um, how we went from transition to reality. We were waiting on um, our funding to be found and approved. And then as soon as that happened, um, there was a really quick jump into um, what we have now. Um, so this, again, was the initial space that we were looking at developing. And this is a transitional picture that shows the construction. This is essentially what it looked like that first fall 2010 semester um, before anything was done to it. And you can see that here they're actually starting some work after the funding was approved. And we ended up with this beautiful space um, that has um, three glass study rooms, um, the biggest one here in the center that's blue, and then there's two on either side of it um, that students use for study areas, um, beautiful carpet, painting, um, and all of that opened in the fall of 2011. Um, we were very, very happy to be in our new space. Yeah, it's a very flexible space. You'll note that all of the furnishings are on wheels, so uh, the tutors or the students or the staff, for that matter, can reconfigure this however it's needed in very short order. All right, and you can see over here, too, we have a movable whiteboard, excuse me, that's double-sided. And um, that's really great for the flexibility of the space also. We do have some that are mounted, too, but um, this allows tutors to kind of create study spaces. Um, and, you know, if they're doing working with a group or a student or whatever, um, and just use it however they need to, wherever they need to. So as a result, the library gate count has started to <coughs> excuse me, trend up, and we uh, hope that that's going to continue. We're pretty sure that it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <coughs> and, um, you know, we don't have the numbers for this current year, um, but we anticipate that um, they're going to be just as high, if not higher, than they were last year. There's been about a 30% increase since um, 2009-2010 to, to this 2011-12 year. Uh, peer tutoring attendance I had shared with you was around uh, 5,000 uh, visits every year um, before the Learning Commons was built. We had a pretty big bump in 2009 and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> um, but then um, the Learning Commons started in 2010 and we, we maintained um, our attendance, which I thought was great because we were in a new space and we had to tell everybody where we were and get the whole campus involved in, in sending students to the right place. And it worked. Um, we didn't go down in our attendance, um, maintained that again. And then this last year, 
we saw a huge increase. And I think that is because the word of the learning commons has gotten out to students. Um, the students who are here now as upperclassmen um, are students who have been here ever since the learning commons uh, was, was around. And so it's more ingrained um, in the population that we have. The Writing Center attendance, you know, has fluctuated, as we said. Um, there was a decrease the first year that we had um, the, the Learning Commons in place, and part of that, most of that was due to the fact that we didn't have a Writing Center director at the time, um, and so it was difficult um, for us to maintain the, the success that it had had prior to that. Um, but we have rebounded quite a bit um, in the last couple years, um, and we hope with you know, that with new uh, staffing in the next year that that will continue to increase. And I don't want to give the impression that our writing center isn't busy. Um, we are booked two weeks in advance. And so part of the reason that the numbers here in 2012 are a little lower than they were in 2009 is because we have fewer tutors. Um, but, uh, you know, again, with, with um, uh, leadership, we hope to um, increase that as more tutors are hired. So. So we've made a lot of efforts to ensure the success. And we always keep in mind that the reason that we're doing this is for our students. Uh, we have, um, our, our mission is to help them succeed academically. And that goes beyond any boundaries. Um, I think that we see us having as programs um, we really, truly try to work together to make this as um, efficient, isn't even the right word, synergistic, <laughs> I think is better for students um, so that it's working to their um, greatest advantage. We developed some marketing pieces to tie the programs together, and uh, we think they're working. Uh, we're going to continue to do that and try to improve our marketing in the future. One of the pieces we do is um, a banner that we put on the front of the library building. Um, it just reminds students who are coming back where we are and that we're here, and it tells new freshmen also, stamp, you know, here's the place you go for the learning commons, because they all would have heard about this in freshman orientation. And this gives them a visual as to where we, uh, where we are. The media services develops some signage for us. Um, using the theme common knowledge and uh, there's arrows pointing to where the learning commons is located. The new library website that's just been rolled out um, makes the learning commons stand out much more than it did with the previous website. We also coordinated some events together in the fall of 2011 and 12. Um, First, uh, we want to tell you about some videos that we have. Um, a Bluetooth, uh, where the, our colors are blue and gold, so instead of YouTube, we have Bluetooth on YouTube. And um, uh, we had a Bluetooth video for prospective students that helps explain what the Learning Commons is, how to use it, where it's located, um, and all of that, you know, is pushed to students as they're oriented to the campus. Uh, Louis the Loper is the campus mascot, so uh, we presented a fable uh, based on Louis the Loper and how he learned to use the resources of the Learning Commons. Right. And both of these are available to you. Um, you know, you can either copy down um, the bit links there, or um, I, I know that this um, presentation will be available um, after the fact, and you're welcome to access those that way. We had a game night in um, both the fall of 2010 and fall 2011, um, and that um, was an opportunity for students to come into the Learning Commons, get to know the tutors, because uh, tutors were there, and just have fun. You know, this, this was the year that we had our new furniture, um, and it was great for them to come and see the space and just enjoy being there um, and find out that tutors aren't scary people and that this is a really great place to come and get help. Yeah, actually the tutors and the students were involved in selecting the furnishings that you see in the, uh, in the new space. Mm -hmm. Right. Now in the fall of 2012, um, we took a little bit different approach because we wanted to work 
um, in orienting students more directly with the library. Yeah, in all the programs actually. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, not only in the learning commons, but we had uh, activities all over the building. And they included things like ring toss and bowling and uh, darts and uh, all fun things designed to show students that the library is a pleasant place to be, uh, that you're welcome to be here. And we don't expect it to always be quiet. <laughs> uh, last year we also had a lib quiz, which was modeled after a pub quiz, except with no pub. Um, and it was, it wasn't, you know, there wasn't a huge turnout for that, um, but it was very successful. Um, we had a, um, a English professor MC the the event, and the students who came. Um, bonded <laughs> so closely over that two hours that they were there. Afterwards they hung around for you know a half hour just talking to each other and most of them were complete strangers. Um, so this was a great opportunity again to introduce them to uh, the library and the learning commons um, and also to work with the librarians in hosting this event by getting help having them help us develop trivia questions. Um, that was another fun thing that that kind of brought this together as a joint effort. We meet weekly for uh, every Friday at 9 o'clock, uh, two partners from Student Affairs, two from the library, and uh, we will continue to do that. We normally have an agenda, but we also use this for strategic planning and looking at new activities that we might want to implement. Uh -huh. Another aspect that we've changed since we started was um, initially we just had one Learning Commons Assistant Director um, and that position we still have and it's housed in Student Affairs. But we've also added the Learning Commons Assistant Director for the library who is um, your presenter, Dr. Mahan Wirtz. And what that does is it allows each partner um, to have equal footing or stake in the development of the Learning Commons. Of an ins it ensures that that partnership um, is truly working together um, and um, coordinates the um, communication of what's going on in the Learning Commons and coming up in the Learning Commons um, to both uh, lines of reporting. So both the Student Affairs and Library side are equally informed and involved and engaged with uh, what is going on in our space. Another thing that um, has happened <laughs> Um, is that we have increased our services significantly over the last uh, year. We've added supplemental instruction, uh, which is an international program that focuses on uh, collaboration outside the classroom using games and activities instead of direct uh, question and answer tutoring. We've also developed um, a language table program and that has um, exploded over the last year um, because of the support of our Modern Languages Department. And those language tables also use games and activities to focus, um, student, focus the support to students academically. Um, we have a lot of support um, from the Modern Languages Department for that in terms of finding people, um, both native speakers and tutors, to run those tables. They're also giving us a GA who is going to coordinate those tables next year. Yeah, I have a personal stake in this since I taught foreign languages for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so Ron will be working with that GA to coordinate the language table program next year, um, which we see as another great sign of um, the collaboration and partnership that made the Learning Commons work. Uh, we're currently uh, one of 75 schools across the United States, uh, ranging from small private schools and community colleges through mid-size uh, liberal arts schools to medium and large uh, research universities. And what we're trying to determine is if our um, library instruction has actual impact on student learning outcomes. So we're going to be working on that over the next year and we're due to uh, do a poster presentation at the NLA meeting in uh, 2014 in uh, Las Vegas. Another thing that we're very excited about is our undergraduate research seminars, which, you know, again, developed kind of spontaneously over the last year. 
Um, I'll show you a couple posters. Um, these are the two presentations that we did last spring. Um, and again, this is a Learning Commons Library Undergraduate Research uh, Collaborative Venture. Um, so that, you know, we, we are all, all these three parts are coming together um, to facilitate these. Um, the first was the IRB, um, helping students understand the IRB process. And um, it wasn't heavily attended, but it was very informative. Um, I think it was just um, timed um, in a bad time for when students need to hear that information. Um, so we'll be offering that again next year, earlier in the, in the year. The second one was a research uh, a seminar from, by a speaker from the CDC who talked about uh, government-funded research on uh, insect-borne diseases. And that was uh, really well attended. We had somewhere between 40 and 50 uh, people that showed up for that. We even had to uh, provide more chairs. We hadn't counted on that many people showing right. up. And so we used that success um, to help um, build our, our itinerary for next year's undergraduate research seminars. Um, again, we'll have the IRB again in September um, when students will most likely be starting that process if they need to for their research. In October, we're going to show how to use uh, library resources and internet resources to uh, build literature review. Mm -hmm. um, in November, February, and April, we'll have speakers coming in, um, one from e uh, different colleges on campus, just like the CDD CDC speaker was here from Natural and Social Sciences. So. Um, that will engage students from those particular colleges with on current research in the field. Um, in January, the Writing Center will host Writing and Citing a Seminar, which will focus on helping students understand how to organize and write their research papers, um, what citations are going to look like for those research papers, and that will help them build um, something that they can submit to our undergraduate research journal. And then in March, uh John Ritterbush, who is uh, the other library uh, employee that works with the Learning Commons, will be doing a presentation on posters. So finally, our last step, um, we want to talk to you a little bit about um, the future that we see for our Learning Commons. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, we, all, we actually have a technology room that is usable for students. Uh, or by students, rather, who uh, want to do something a little more sophisticated than what you can do with the standard Microsoft Office or PowerPoint uh, presentation. It has uh, Adobe Creative Suite and some other uh, more sophisticated uh, tools. Uh, one of the things that we need to do is to provide some additional support and instruction on how to use those tools. So we're looking at getting a touch screen monitor that we can mount in our blue glass room that students can hook up a laptop, an iPad, whatever device to, and then collaborate in developing a presentation. Um, another thing that we really want to look at at this point, you know, we've, we've focused so much on our first years of bringing services together, bringing writing center and peer tutoring together and making those work. And that was a process. Um, but we are now focused on um, ensuring that those services integrate with library services and vice versa so that we can provide um, the amplified um, experience for students in the Learning Commons so that they're getting the most out of each of those services. And a first step in doing so is to understand what's going on, <laughs> essentially, between the library and tutoring. For example, if a writing center tutor is working with a student on a paper, and they see that the student's um, uh, sources are either uh, very poorly researched, or um, maybe they just need help finding a couple more for their paper, we can refer them to a reference librarian um, who can then help them do that. And uh, a, a reference librarian who is working with a student in finding sources often gets questions about writing the paper. And so they would be able to refer that student back to the Writing Center for that kind of help. So we developed a Google Docs um, intake spreadsheet um, 
where whoever is making the referral from one service to another is able to put this information in for us. It's put into a spreadsheet and then we can go back in and um, uh, look at that referral and see if the student followed up with it or not. Because we, we want to know not only did the referral happen, but is the student following through? Because if they're not, we need to do something to ensure that they do so that they're getting the most out of um, our services here. Uh, also, this uh, next year, we're going to be integrating some more informational literacy training into the actual tutor training process. And I'll probably be doing that. <laughs> uh, over the longer term, uh, at the present time, the main floor of the library is divided into parts, uh, one being the library proper, the other being the Mitchell Center. And uh, the Mitchell Center houses the communication department, uh, speech and uh, radio TV kind of operations. Uh, the space is not actually ideal for their uses, uh, although they've done some upgrades over the last year. Um, once other space uh, that's more suitable for them becomes uh, available, the plan is for the library to take that space and reconfigure it for use by other student services. So what we've done is we've gone from these two silos where we had, um, it was more like three, I guess. We yeah. had the writing center, we had peer tutoring, and we had the library all housed in separate spaces, and we've been able to put those together um, and develop this beautiful, um, I think Ron has called it synergistic yeah. <laughs> experience for students to help them do better academically on campus. Yeah. Been a good experience for all of us, I think. Mm -hmm. And most of all for the students. I mean, that's why we're here. So um, we're glad that it's working for them. Yeah, it, it's been um, an interesting process, but we always keep in mind that the reason we're doing it is to help our students succeed academically. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we've got our web, um, web address there if you'd like to visit that. Um, there's some information there. I know there's one uh, part of that website that has um, some different Learning Commons resources, articles, and so forth. If you'd like to do some research um, about Learning Commons, it's there for you. So um, I guess, you know, at this point, if there's any questions, um, we would be really happy to answer anything that anybody might be wondering about. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you very much, Carrie and Ron. Um, does anybody, that, that was great. Um, I remember, as I said, I had seen this presentation earlier this spring, and I took all sorts of notes of my own about it because I thought it was so <laughs> interesting. I mean, you hear a lot of people talking about doing um, learning commons, but and that, yes, we've got one, and here is what it does, but seeing the process from what it used to be is something you don't always necessarily, you know, hear about. You just see, yay, we finally got one going. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions? Any questions or comments, you can type them in to um, the question section of the GoToWebinar interface here, or if you have a microphone, just let me know and I can unmute you and we can take your questions that way. Um, nobody, typed, nobody had anything during the, sh the session okay. um, that, that came in that I was holding on to or anything. There's just that one at the very beginning about your chairs that are right there again in that <laughs> photo. <laughs> the cool chairs that you have. And I've got the contact info for the director at that library, so I'll send, be sending it off to you. Um, yeah, we we found that the booths are very popular. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. they look very cool, very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, one question, a couple questions I was thinking of that um, were mentioned when we, I saw the presentation before. Um, how is the whole space staffed? Like, how are people you know greeted and assigned to different? I know you said that you have a waiting list uh, of people. Um, scheduled to, to do things, but what's the basic, you know, flow of how that all works when people well, just kind of come I in wish, on the fly, I guess? Yeah, sure. I wish that I had included a picture of our welcome desk. I, I realize that's a shortcoming now in our presentation, but um, we do have a welcome desk that is positioned right near the stairs where students come up to the Learning Commons um, and come into our space, and that is staffed by students. 
Um, students check in there. Um, we have a couple different computers that they can check in on. Um, and then that uh, Welcome Desk Assistant will take them to their writing tutor who they have an appointment with, or take them to um, a subject tutor. Who, we have a walk-in subject tutoring service, so it will just that person will just take the, the student to whoever is available. Um, and students also just walk in and out. You know, we, we don't want students to sign in if they're just there to study, and they, <laughs> they just need a booth to sit in. Right, because it's just um, an available space to come in and use what's exactly. there if they want, right. yeah. Yes, exactly. And so it's a very, you know, as Ron has, has emphasized, very flexible. Um, the only thing we need to track is, is the actual services. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we do have some questions now. Um, someone wants to say first that um, it's so great how much you're working with integrating library resources in, with the tutoring mm -hmm. services. Um, and do you have the librarians scheduled to spend time in the Learning Center, um, the Learning Commons, on a regular basis? And have you considered um, an embedded librarian to be there? Well, we're going to have um, librarians assigned during uh, scheduled hours but then they'll be also available on call outside of the scheduled period. Because mm -hmm. this is the and same actually, building as the um, library, John, correct? So John Ritterbush and I serve as embedded librarians at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your question, Krista? I think no, you I was just saying, because this, this, is, this is the same building as the library itself. Yes. Right. So it's exactly. very easy for someone to like pop up and down or wherever they need yeah, to be, yeah. and, or you guys to send someone to the library for whatever they might need. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And one of the advantages uh, is that, you know, the library is open more hours than any other building on campus. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it allows for extended hours in the learning conference. Right. Oh, and we're nice. able to add mm -hmm. some additional hours to our schedule because of that. So. Mm -hmm. So I think this also relates to the next question that came up was, how do library reference services work in the learning commons? Um, right now, on a referral basis. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, um, in the future, we're looking to, um, again, our focus in the first two years, I sound like I'm making an excuse, was to just get things working with the services. And mm -hmm. so now we're able to turn our attention to, um, you know, making more of that convenient in that space. And so, and so that's, that's a focus for our next few years of, of work. Uh, another thing that's become apparent is that we actually need more room. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we mm -hmm. could use another three or four thousand square feet. Yeah, our space is often full. <laughs> and that's what you're already looking into in that area right next door uh, to we're, for expansion. We're promoting that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. So the Learning Commons then is open and staffed during the same hours that the, all the hours of the library is open then, or? Well, yeah, the Learning Commons space, of course, is open any time the library is. The services themselves uh, typically run from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, right. So actually, going to us having a having a um, like official tutors on yes. on staff and ready there to help someone. Gotcha. Right. Um, Oh, good question. Uh, you mentioned that, that all the furniture is on wheels, including the tables, and I know you talked about this before. How often are they rearranged by users? <laughs> Whenever they want. Yeah, every, every day. <laughs> um, I'll go in there and um, there'll be tables moved. It's, it's every yeah. day. And we really don't worry too much about putting them back to a certain, you know, configuration because they just get moved again. If it looks really messy, we might, you know, kind of... Work with them, but neaten it up um, a little bit, maybe. Yeah, but every day they they are they are manipulated. Mm -hmm. I think I remember what you had mentioned in the previous when I watched the session before that um, you started putting in the furniture, and while you were in the midst of it, they were already moving things and taking it yeah, elsewhere. Actually, and that was yeah. that was uh, on the main floor of the library when we moved the uh, reference collection downstairs. We opened up a space that's pretty comparable in size to the Learning Commons, a little bit larger. And as we were putting the tables and chairs in, students were sitting down. <laughs> and that, that told us right away that we've done something right. Mm -hmm. I see Robin awesome. has a question. Am I supposed to? Nope, that was one that I just did. Oh, OK. Yep. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Robert, good. sorry. Yes. <laughs> 
So how about, um, I know this sounds like a great place for students to be there hanging out and doing lots of things and you know, spending a lot of time there. Um, have you considered, as in some places, having um, some sort of a cafe or food type stuff there? Is there somewhere nearby that already has that that they can you know, use? Yeah, there are. Actually, on the main floor of the library, there's a vending machine area. We really need a coffee shop down there. Yes. Uh, yeah, lots of places have that, yeah. yeah. And, and that's something too that you know we want to explore as we move forward because it, it's it's a hot spot you know for students. Our our services had in total eleven thousand visits last year, and wow. so yeah, um, you know if a coffee shop was there, I they would they would probably get a lot of business. <laughs> yeah, they should know that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um. There's another question that came in. Do you have um, hardwired computers for the students there, or do they use wireless laptops that they bring in themselves, or how is that all? Yeah, we have both. Um, we have uh, desktops that are available for students. We have six desktops, which doesn't sound like a lot, um, but it's sufficient for our space. And then we have ample wireless. Um, there are several wireless ports in our Learning Commons, um, almost one on each of the pillars that you see there in the picture. Mm. Um, and it, at times, that's not even enough um, because we have iPads and you know all kinds of things happening there. So we access the internet both ways. Okay. Um, and another question came in: um, Is there any charge for the tutoring service for the students? Well, it's funded through student fees, so yes okay. and no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Students don't have to pay up front, and they're not limited in you know the number of times that they access help, um, but. Uh, it, we are, our student workers are completely student fee funded, mm -hmm. and we have about 65 workers. Yeah. Right. And one thing that is maybe important to think about our campus is that we have the highest percentage of international students on any cam campus in the mm. University of Nebraska system, and some of our tutors are international. Students. Yeah, and we try to do that so that, you know, like I said, I think I said before, we create a global perspective in the learning commons, so it's not just, you know, mid-Nebraska stamp. Um, it looks like the world, and so um, that's something we really try to push with how we staff it. I'll mention also, um, uh, we've talked about the whiteboards, but one of the things that has become apparent is that the glass walls are very useful. Uh, students use those to write on. Ah, and, okay. Uh, Carrie, you want to talk about that? Sure. We have liquid chalk, and oh. you know, there's several mornings where I, I walk in and there's physics all over my walls. <laughs> and it's awesome. great. It is such a great thing to see. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to see that collaboration happening because that's Look. where the people learn. So mm -hmm. yeah. another thing that's, that's awesome. happened this last year, especially, is that we've had a number of faculty members volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. up in the learning commons outside their normal office hours. Right, and we have 12 new faculty and departments who want to do the same thing. So, so that's, just, that's pretty significant. That's, that's bringing even more um, collaborators into the space mm -hmm. that we could not have done in our old space. Yeah, it sounds like you guys were very, got a lot of support, having the support from the administration and the faculty yeah. really makes a and difference. It's really in this. gratifying, yeah. both from the administration and the, and the faculty. Mm -hmm. um, they really support the idea of the Learning Commons and, and uh, are committed to its success. And it's working, so. It's working. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, another question that came in, um, for library, I'm not, you might know this, um, Ron, um, how many desktops and laptops library-wide are available for the students, like so in the library itself that's nearby? I don't know the exact number. It's more than 100. So even though you've got just a few here for specific, now this area, you know, for learning comments, for group study type things, as I can see the tables and whatnot, mm -hmm. there probably be a lot of things you're doing that don't require the mm -hmm. computers, yeah. and that's why it works for and you guys have, as fewer. You know, uh, two computer labs, and uh, they're used pretty heavily mm -hmm. for instruction, but they're also used by students uh, outside of instructional time. Mm -hmm. And we have good wireless throughout the library, so. Um, uh, many, many students will collaborate using their own uh, laptops throughout the building. Right. And you know, some things on our wish list are like that touch screen monitor. Um, 
There's also even tables that have touchscreen monitors embedded in them. Oh, yeah. Um, I've looked at <laughs> tools <laughs> over it, so, you know, that would be something really cool to offer in our, our space as well. Yeah, get a Microsoft Surface. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ah, yes. Uh, last year, something specific, um, the, the tornado, the windstorm that came through. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, uh, th I know what it affected. Was that have any effect on um, the learning commons there? Not really on the learning commons. The, I know the library had damage. Yeah, the library uh, it basically blew off the insulation and the overcoat. Mm. Uh, there is a new temporary... Uh, they call it a bladder that they've installed, uh, but they're waiting for insurance and other things. To oh, still? Wow. Come in before right. they put down a new roof altogether. Yeah. So if you look on the picture that's still up, um, mm -hmm. like the bookshelves that you see here between our, our walls, those are all cordoned off right now because yeah. that's where the water damage was. So yeah. that's uh, okay. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. Plastic sheeting still. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because I remember seeing the photos that went around on Facebook and whatnot of all the books um, laid out on the floor trying to do a quick get them dry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm glad that, you know, things are slowly progressing with that. <laughs> Yeah, we are <laughs> Okay, um, any other, we're about the top of the hour here, 11 o'clock here Central Time. Um, any last minute questions or comments anybody from the audience wants to uh, type in here or ask? You can use your microphone if you want to or just type them in as people have been, which works fine, obviously. I don't think they see anything urgent. Um, you do have their, um, you, you can of course um, find the website here. I have done, um, taken the link for the website and for those two videos, put them into um, the Library Commission's Delicious account. So they will be included when we put the recording up. So you have quick links to those, the videos, and the page for the Learning Commons itself. So you can contact uh, Carrie and Ron to see, ask them any other questions you might have about it. Uh, we do have some thank yous. It was very informative, this session. <laughs> Great. I'm so glad. So, yeah, so thank you very much. That was, this is, yeah, like I said, a great session. Well, thank I'm, you for asking us to do this. Uh, yeah. yeah we're, like really, I, we're really proud of the Learning Commons and, and uh, really committed to its success. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, yeah, I, this is the kind of thing I... I know this is a, I don't know how new you might say, it's something that libraries and universities are doing now, and we did not have this kind of thing when I was in college, which was a <laughs> while ago that I won't, I won't say, but I wish we had. It would have been, I think, a much more um, interactive kind of education kind of, previously right. to this kind of thing, you're kind of on your own to find this place, find that place, find the resource you need over here in this other building, and um, kind of scattered. Yeah. Exactly. You can dig it up if you need to do, but this works very well, yeah. So mm -hmm. I am going to pull back um, presenter control to myself here so I can um, to wrap up the thing here. Ah, there we go. Okay, all right here. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for attending this week. The show is being recorded, so it will be available only later today, tomorrow. Um, and as I said, I did include um, the links in our commission's delicious account. I saved them over here, so um, they will also be available when um, the recording goes up. So that wraps it up for this week's Encompass Live. Um, I hope you'll join us next week on the show. We have something we just added, so you might not have heard about it. Libraries and the new health insurance marketplace. Um, at the ALA conference just last month, it was announced that libraries are going to be helping um, people get to the websites and information they need for signing up for the new um, health care options uh, made available by the Affordable, Affordable Health Care Act. So we have jumped in and put together a session of what we know now, it's just getting started. Um, we will have Kendra Morgan on, who is from Web Junction, who has received a grant from IMLS to create training materials and webinars to help librarians know what they need to do. Um, and um, Mary Sowers, who is our Government Information Services Librarian here at the Library Commission, will be on also talking about other resources that are available out there right now and um, what we're putting, what's being put together to um, help librarians know where to direct people and how to help them with this. So that will be our show next week, so hope you'll uh, sign up and join us for that. Um, 
Encompass Live is also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do go ahead and pop over there and like our page, and you will get notifications of when <coughs> recordings are done and available, and new shows that have been added to the to the um, schedule. Um, reminders I do every week when the new shoot ones. Um, episodes a bit ready to start so people can pop in on the fly and join us so any news and information about Encompass Live will be here on our um, Facebook page. So if we don't have any last minute questions which it doesn't look like we do we will wrap it up for this morning and say thank you very much for attending and we will see you next week.